as God's people who are singing hallelujah to Jesus. This is gathered together, knowing that he is our God and we are his church. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our Savior. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord help us. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God Christ. Amen. Lord have the peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God of Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness. That for those who glory in you as their Creator and Guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole community of the sons of Israel began to complain against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness and said to them, why did we not die at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt when we were able to sit down to pans of meat and could eat bread to our heart's content? As it is, you have brought us to this wilderness to starve this whole company to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now I will rain down bread for you from the heavens. Each day the people are to go out and gather the day's portion. I propose to test them in this way, to see whether they will follow my law or not. I have heard the complaints of the sons of Israel. Say this to them. Between the two evenings you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have bread to your heart's content. Then you will learn that I, the Lord, am your God. And so it came about. Quails flew up in the evening, and they covered the camp. In the morning there was a coating of dew all round the camp. When the coating of dew lifted, there on the surface of the desert was a thing delicate, powdery, as fine as hoarfrost on the ground. When they saw this, the sons of Israel said to one another, What is that? Not knowing what it was. That, said Moses to them, is the bread the Lord gives you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
When the people saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into boats and crossed to Capernaum to look for Jesus. When they found him on the other side, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, you are not looking for me because you have seen the signs, but because you had all the bread you wanted to eat. Do not work for food that cannot last but work for food that endures to eternal life, the kind of food the Son of Man is offering, for on him the Father God himself has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do if we are to do the works that God wants? Jesus gave them this answer, This is working for God. You must believe in the one he has sent. So they said, What sign will you give to show us that we should believe in you. What work will you do? Our fathers had manna to eat in the desert. As scripture says, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, it was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven. It is my father who gives you the bread from heaven, the true bread. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said, give us that bread always. Jesus answered, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. Who believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Many of you know I was on retreat last week at Buckfast Abbey with Bishop Declan and many other members of our diocesan clergy, including, I add, um, Canon Liam. It was a lovely week um, and we um, pondered um, the words of our speaker, who was a Dominican, uh, a young Dominican called Richard Unsworth. It was a relaxed affair. Some people seem to imagine that we go into the great silence on these retreats but I can assure you, um, it, it's not, it's very relaxed. And there was time for quiet and time for reflection, but there was also time for whining and dining. And each night, I, must, I was happy to say, there was a free bar, which was a bonus. Um, and that's maybe why I've got this sore throat now, maybe, I don't know. It's, um, the theme of the retreat was from exile to restoration and Richard, Unsworth, um, the Dominican priest, I think, had chosen a wise title, especially in light of maybe these recent um, 18 months that we've had in our experiences at the church where we have had the exile of the lockdowns that took place. And now, I suppose, we are in that process of restoration. But Father Richard was very keen to tell us that restoration was not about going back to the way the things were, but rather building something completely different. And in his reflections in the scriptures, especially the book of Exodus, the book of Hebrews, the story of Jonah and Job, and also um, his reflections on the book of Ruth, he led us through a lovely contemplation on what it means for the joy of things being restored. It seems as if in the gospel today, the people who had been with Jesus during the feeding of the 5,000 were seeking more as they followed him to Capernaum. And they ask him quite strangely, they say, what sign will you give us? Well, he just turned five barley loaves and two fish 
into food that would feed over 5,000 people. You wonder what more signs that he could give for him to prove that he was the promised one, the Messiah, the Son of God. But their hearts, it seems, are still longing, they're still searching, they're still seeking. And so Jesus tells them that the bread that they received on, on the shores of the Sea of Galilee was a symbol and sign of the Eucharist that he would give to, the, him, to them and the church. As he says to them, it is my Father who gives you the bread from heaven, the true bread, for the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread always. And we can maybe also think here that intimate encounter of Jesus with the woman at the well, where she has gone to get water, and he promises her water that will never run out, water that will sustain her and enable her to be nourished forever. And she eagerly seeks his words, she eagerly seeks his presence. During the week, I also overheard a conversation between two of my brothers. Um, they were asking why it was that Jesus used bread in the example of, used bread for his giving and sharing of the Last Supper. Well, of course, bread was a very common substance, and it seems that there was always bread, there, will all, there is always bread, and there will be bread always. And so in that sense, it is a perfect uh, means by which Jesus could sustain the church. One of my colleagues maybe um, uh, flippantly said, well, he could have used potatoes. Well, he couldn't have used potatoes, because as we know, they weren't discovered for another 1,500 years as the Europeans went off to explore the Americas. It was a funny image, though. The Lord gave us potatoes from heaven. No, it doesn't really go well, does it? And as I mentioned last week, that God wants us to be nourished, our bodies to be nourished, but he also wants our hearts and our souls and our spirits to be, to, to be nourished as well. And so as we gather together at this Eucharist, let us remember that we receive the bread of the angels, the bread of heaven. We stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father and all the angels, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of one man. church and everyone who serves Christ's body in worship, education and the care of the poor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the single, the engaged, the married, for the ordained, for our sisters and brothers in consecrated life, for, for fidelity to our vocations. Lord, in your mercy, 
for the homeless, the sick, the addicted, the imprisoned, for their families and everyone who serves them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our appreciation and love of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist to grow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before God those who have died, those whose anniversaries occur at this time, and those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the parish of St Thomas of Canterbury, Fairford with Cricklade, and our own parish, that we may learn to appreciate the tremendous value of the Eucharist and draw from it the strength to commit ourselves to our neighbour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We ask Mary, Mother of the Church, to pray with us and for us as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the silence of our hearts, we turn to our Father with our personal intentions. God our Father, you sent your Son among us born of Mary. May our response to your word be deep and true, so that we might make him known to the Lord. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world, that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sin, so that what you might love in us, what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored, to those gifts of grace that through sin we have lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, we, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exhortation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the glory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church fed throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Declan, our Bishop, and all who serve in the kingdom. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Teresa Garrity, for whom we offer this Mass, and all who have died in the light of your have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
those who have joined us on the live stream and have their hands for you today. Like Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacraments of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since many have at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into their hearts. We embrace you as if you were there already. Would you like to ask that I restore you to you? Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. The company with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew these heavenly gifts, and in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just to mention that uh, we have been asked to uh, put on the trouble of spinning back um, because they're a bit low on um, stores at the moment, and we will be introducing, uh, reintroducing our usual practice of bringing our donations to church um, up on the last weekend of this month. But if you wish to bring any before then, please do so and drop them in the porch and they will be given to the food bank um, as they come in. So if you can support that, please do. And as I said, we were resuming our usual practice that we had to stop at the beginning of the first lockdown. Also, I've invited Bishop Declan to come to Trowbridge to celebrate the sacraments of confirmation in June or July of next year. So if you are in Europe or above in uh, college or school uh, and have not been confirmed, then you're very welcome to make an application in September when forms will be available and the, the course itself details will be given later once we know how many people we have applied. If you're older than 18, then we have um, and wish to know more about the Catholic Church or maybe this confirmation yourself, we have the ABC group beginning in September about being Catholic, about becoming Catholic. More information in the newsletter if you receive it online um, and there are some paper copies available at the back of the church. If you wish to um, sign up for the newsletter via email, please drop me an email and you'll be added to the list. We also have a draw for the 300 Club today. Um, Frank Petty isn't here for drawing because he's at home, he has to isolate because one of his carers unfortunately was diagnosed with COVID. But Frank, I know he's joining us online. Still making sure that all procedures with the 300 Club uh, are done properly. Mark. Have a nice weekend. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The last is it. Thank you, God.